In a world flooded by tactical Tupperware. What are the best polymer striker fired handguns? That's what we're going to tackle today. Welcome to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting the right way with God at the center, Judeo Christian values, and real world first hand experience. This is not your first rodeo and you like the podcast. I hope you consider just quickly and easily scrolling down and hitting some stars. Appreciate you. With that, I'll put in the bio and then we'll get into what I think with my training and or experience are the best polymer striker fired handguns today. First and foremost, I am a Christian, a servant of God and a follower of Jesus Christ. God has blessed me to do many things in my life for I could do nothing apart from him. U.S. Marine Corps combat veteran did a couple of tours in Iraq. As an assaultman after my combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. Also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also did several years in law enforcement, LAPD. I worked regular assignments and more specialized assignments been a private contractor for a three-letter government agency. That's all I'll say about that. Been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion. And West Coast Regional Rifle Champion won more shooting competitions with the talent that God's given me than I can actually remember. Was blessed to be the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area. Our primary job, the reason we primarily existed, was to stop active shooters. I got the opportunity to head up and be the commander of that team. I grew up around guns, hunting and shooting and competing at a very early age. Been blessed to hunt all over this beautiful country from whitetail on the east coast to mule deer on the west coast and bear and elk and all manner of things. I've even been a professional big game hunter and guide. But again, most importantly, I'm a Christian. All right, the best polymer striker fired handguns to date. A couple of caveats. These are full size fighting handguns. Something you might use as a fighting handgun, as in military, police, and hopefully for your daily carry, a full size fighting handgun. I'm not including any subcompact guns in this review. Also, I'm not going to mention every mod. This is like make and model. If it's very similar, I'm not going to mention it. Just deduce that the other one would be good as well. Right? Like I wouldn't do a 19 and a 19X as two different things. If you want a black Glock or a peanut butter Glock, that's up to you. Also, I'm not going to talk about brand new guns that just came out at SHOT Show. Now, this doesn't qualify because it's not striker fired. It's hammer fired. But the new Rock Island Armory... 5.0 5.0 they call it again doesn't qualify because it's hammer fired but it's not going to make the list because it's brand new you don't know if it's good or not it may be genius it may be an abomination don't be a beta tester in a gunfight these are proven good guns they're not necessarily have to be that old but they have to be around long enough that they have kinks and issues worked out of them and they don't have any overarching problems with the design And if they did, they wouldn't make the list, right? Because this is the best polymer striker-fired handguns per my training and experience. Enough of that. Let's get into it. Number one. The M17. The M17, the military's new polymer striker-fired handgun. It's the U.S. military's first mass issue, right? They've issued out Glocks and stuff before, but their first mass issue polymer striker fired handgun. Done two whole episodes now on the M17. The handgun I hate to love I think was the title of one and a year in review. I bought one kind of reluctantly. I'm not getting into that whole story. Got a good deal on it. Wanted to run an optic. It's a good handgun. It's a good handgun. It's not the first modular design. It's not even six first modular design. They had the 250, which flopped. But the 320 was around for a while. It had some issues. 
and there's new models of the 320 coming out all the time, I would advise you to be judicious and get something proven again. But the M17, I think, is proven. The Army, the Marine Corps, has not spewed it out of its mouth. They seem to be just ha just fine and happy with it. Now, you can argue whether it should have won the trials or not. I'm actually of the opinion I probably don't think it should have. But that said, it did. And that said, it's a proven design. And I have run mine. It's actually on my hip right now. That modularity does have some advantages. That fire control unit, I think, although more complicated than a lot of other designs, again, is, is shown to be proven. At least the M17 variant of that. And by that, again, you can deduce the M18. Whatever I'm saying about the M17, the M18, likewise, I said, no problems if you want the barrel chopped off and you want a smaller barrel, smaller slide get the M18. But that's one of the cool things. You could just have one and then just get the barrel and slide for the other. And you pretty much have both. Somebody that I know that lives in a fairly restricted state, and this is going to be his first handgun. He just turned old enough to receive a handgun. And he lives in one of those states where you have to get a little bit of permission to buy a handgun, which is what it is. But he asked which handgun for a first handgun. And I recommended the this platform. M17, M18, 320 if you want. But it's good for that reason. It's a modular, and especially somebody getting into handguns, you might not know exactly what grip size they are or what grip size they want. Yeah, you can get a Glock and take a Dremel to it, or another polymer striker fire handgun and take a Dremel to it. I've certainly done that, but with this, you could just get a new grip module, and you haven't destroyed a gun if you do something wrong. The quality of the components are very good on these SIGs. I'm not a SIG fanboy. I'm really not. I reluctantly bought the M17. A big part of that was I wanted to see what the military's new handgun was going to be. But it's a good handgun. So good I put it in the number one spot. It's accurate. It's reliable. It's modular. It's not expensive. It's not a cheap gun, but it's not a crazy expensive gun. It's a good value. I'd say it has good ergos, but it's modular. So that's kind of a moot point because if you don't like the factory grip module, you just spend not a lot of money at least compared to whole guns and get a different grip module. The M17, M18 comes ready for an optic. That's awesome. Unlike a lot of newer designs, and I still consider this a newer design, the mags, because I think it was adopted by the military and has become very popular, the mags are not overly expensive. The magazines work. Their factory ones actually are not my favorite. However, they work well and they're not expensive. That's another plus for this gun. Wilson Combat makes stuff for it, another plus. It's just a good gun, and for the value, for the money. And a big reason why is if somebody came to me today and said, I want to get serious about training with a handgun, about being a, maybe not even a gunfighter or a student of the gun. They want to be a well-armed, well-regulated person in a militia. They want to be part of that citizen protective force. Just let's leave it at that. And they said, I want a good handgun. I'd like a good polymer striker fired handgun. I would recommend the M17. That'd be the number one thing I'd recommend. And that's why it's in the number one slot. Moving on to the number two. Number two, the Canic Rival. Yeah, it surprises even me. One of the very few handguns that I reversed my decision on. When these first came out, I knew somebody that had one. Let's just say we were doing work in the private sector. He tried for a long time to get that gun to work, and it just, he loved that gun, but it did not love him back. Let's put it that way. That was early on, I think. The ones lately have impressed me, and by lately, I mean for several years, I think. The quality control seems to be good. The Canic Rival is basically a new iteration of the SFX. And the reason it makes the list, and so highly on the list, is it's so much for the money this is definitely i think the best value on the list it has so many features it comes with a magwell it comes optics cut and not only comes optics cut it has in my opinion of all the factory ways to mount optics and i've mounted quite a few when i was managing a firearms and training company that was part of my job part of what i did i rolled up my sleeves and did gunsmithing work as well 
and I mounted quite a few optics. And the best factory mounting system I have seen hitherto for is the Canik. It's solid. It, the cutouts are solid. Just it's well designed and well thought out. It does not seem like a cheap afterthought like some other guns did with their mounting system. Glock. I'm gonna call them out on that. But the Canik really does have a really good mounting system. It's beefy. It's robust. It's again well engineered and thought out. The Canik rival comes with that. It comes with. I, I don't know if the, if the best, but just an exquisitely good, in, as far as polymer striker fire triggers go, an exquisitely good trigger. The ergonomics on it are fantastic. Not modular, but the ergonomics on it, at least to me, I mean, right, that's kind of individualistic, but good ergos, comes with a magwell, comes with a bunch of extras, optics cut, optics ready, good quality. If you if somebody came to me and said, "Hey, I have been handgunning for a while. I want to get into competition." I'd say, "That's awesome. Good for you. Take it to the next level." And they're like, "I want to get into handgun competitions. What should I get? Canic Rival. Like, I'm just got Canic Rival. If you want to shoot competition, Canic Rival. It's made for that. You could carry it as a carry gun. I would have no problem as long as I got mine and ran it and made sure it was good cuz even the most reliable, reputable versions of guns can have issues but as long as I ran it and it was reliable I carry a fairly big gun day to day as my go to EDC gun most people aren't going to carry a gun this big if you wanted to it would be a good choice but mostly when I think about this gun I think competition shooting it's even got that kind of panache that flair if you look at it the quite strikingly attractive gun perhaps the best looking gun on the list anyway the Canic Rival you get a lot for the money Moving into the number three slot, and my personal favorite, but I try to judge soberly. I'm not going to make it number one because it's my favorite. The Smith & Wesson m and Now, by God's provision and blessing and the talents he's given me, I have won more shooting competitions with a Smith & Wesson m and than any other handgun, hands down, by far. Also... My wife's full-size fighting handgun that she had before I met her, Smith & Wesson m and I really like the 1.0s, the old school. What I carried as a police officer, I carried several of them, went through several different ones of them. And also in competition, I wanted to carry a similar gun to what I shot in competition, Smith & Wesson m and I really like the pro models. And what I would call full-size, a 5-inch barrel, like a 1911. Most people will call that like a long slide. I just call it a full-size I still consider, I guess, the Smith & Wesson 2.0 kind of the newer version, but it's been around a long time. I don't know exactly when, but it's been out for years. If I'm picking a model, and I have a lot of experience with the Pro Series, I really like them. They make a Smith & Wesson Pro Series core, again, with that, what I would call full-size barrel, cut for an optic. Phenomenal. Again, one of my personal favorites, even I will concede that the trigger on MMPs is not great. Even the 2.0 is not great. That said, if you shoot them a lot, they can be worn in to be quite well. If you pull the trigger, and if you do a little bit of work on them as I did on my competition gun, you pull the trigger on my competition gun and it's just, it's a thing of beauty. They also make that same full-size barrel version in the Optics Ready in the flat dark earth. I'm looking at it right now. The skew is 13569 if you care. That also, that one or the black one. The other one's the Pro Series. This one or that one. This actually is a little bit cheaper for what I'm looking at. Any of those full size models, if you're not going to mount an optic, that doesn't matter. But I'd say in today's day and age, you might as well get one that's optics ready. But the full size, what I would call full length barrel, 5 inch Smith & Wesson MMP, American made. Not exactly modular, but the ergonomics on that gun are, in my opinion, about as close to a 1911 as you're going to get in a polymer striker fired handgun. It was kind of revolutionary in the market when it came. I think, as far as I'm aware, the first popular polymer striker fired handgun that had interchangeable grip modules. That's why after that got introduced, Glock went to like the Gen 4 with the back straps. But the Smith & Wesson m and I think, starts off with better ergos. And those interchangeable back straps are far better than the Glock back straps. They're not just a thing on the back of it, right? Again, kind of an afterthought to say that they have some kind of modularity. They are actually palm swells and change the ergos in the hand. And they're they're done quite well. 
unlike the M17 where it's quite a bit more complex, I think, than it needs to be. Especially if you compare that to like a standard Glock 19. If you look at both of those, the engineering and the number of parts and things, it seems a little bit more complex. The Smith & Wesson MMP, I think, is just as simple and reliable. In my opinion, I'm going to go ahead and say it in my experience. Smith & Wesson MMPs are every bit, if not more, reliable than Glocks. They are fantastically reliable, and they're American-made. And although a lot of their slides are painted, they're stainless steel. I like that. They have a beefy, even on my comp gun, I cannot even fathom the number of rounds I put through that thing. Never had an extractor problem. It has got a beefy, heavy steel extractor, a lot beefier than a lot of other handguns. It's a proven design. I honestly kind of like the looks of the old Gem 1s better, so if you find one of those, kind of a hidden gem, because a lot of people might want the Gen 2s. But, again, I like what I would consider the full size, the 5 inch, like a 1911 size gun. Quite a bit lighter still, but still that kind of size. If you want a shorter version of it, that's on you. But, really good gun. And American made. With that, the number 4 spot. And when I put this out to the patrons, not a single person mention this one and I think I'm not surprised by that because it's kind of a sleeper in this it's not getting a lot of love but it's a fantastic fantastic polymer striker fired handgun any ideas the Walther PDP the Walther PDP I think a fantastic polymer striker fired handgun although I don't think the trigger is as good as a canic rival I think it rivals it Nice play on words there. The ergos are really good. I'll be honest, I think the gun is rather ugly. But when you pick it up, it looks like it would be big and heavy and clunky. And it looks that way, but it doesn't feel or handle that way. The ergonomics, especially for me, you pick it up, it, it feels really well. The texturing is done really well. Again, it looks like it would be heavy, but look up the specs on it. It is not a heavy gun. It comes what I would consider a full size. And then it comes in smaller versions. But it's been around long enough now. I've heard no quality issues with it really i i think they all come optics ready to pdp there may be some that don't but get the optics ready one if you have any desire or think you might sell it one day get the optics ready version not the best optics mounting system but better than some it's light it's handy and not the most attractive to me but beauty is in the eye of the beholder you may think it looks really good i certainly think it looks better than a glock if you're the kind of guy that just wants something different if that appeals to you like you want you want to carry gun, a uh, duty gun that not a lot of people have. You might look at that. I mentioned I like a 5 inch. Well, the PDP makes a 5 inch full size and they make a 5 inch compact. That on itself is cool. So you can get a full size like barrel slide. You get that extra velocity, that extra, you know, sight radius, all the things I liked about that, the grip. And the real estate on that slide for fixing malfunctions, for double feeds, and things like that. Try doing that on, like, a very small gun. I'm not picking on this gun, but try fixing a double feed on a Ruger LCP versus, like, a full-size 5-inch fighting handgun. You get that full slide, all the benefits, the extra velocity, all that. And you can still get it with a compact grip. And if you carry it at 6 o'clock like I do, that's kind of appealing. It's, it's, they're good guns. They really are. They do make smaller versions if you want a smaller version. Their full size version, 18 rounds if you're like the capacity guy that just wants the one or two more rounds. 18 rounds. That's quite nice. It's a standard flush fit mag unlike like the M17 where it's 21 or I think 21 rounds in the big mags. I've got one in my spare. Yep, 21 rounds. That's my extra mag on my side so it's easy to check. But that hangs out quite a bit. This gives you 18 rounds of flush fit. Anyway, the Walther PDP, kind of a sleeper. Really good grip texture. Really good ergonomics. Kind of ugly in my opinion. But hey, if it's an ugly gun that works really well and has good ergonomics and shoots well, you know, whatever. And you might think it's attractive. And the number five slot. I gotta put Glock on the list, right? You know, top five handguns. I gotta put... Glock on there because they deserve it right they deserve it they're a giant chunk of the handgun market 
they are proven. They're kind of the ones. They weren't the first polymer striker fired handgun, but they were the first one to really make it a thing, right? And make it a movement. They are so popular across so many different genres of shooting, right? They're kind of the Taylor Swift of the handgun world, if you will. Kind of this unstoppable force. Like them or don't like them, they're kind of everywhere, right? I think they deserve to be in the spot, but I don't think they deserve one of the top spots because in today's market 2023 there are so many options that even for the money you want just as much reliability same kind of price point smith and weston mp and they're made in america you want to start shooting competitions you go the canic route you get so many more features so much more for the money better optics mounting it comes with a bunch of different optics plates that are good ones comes with a magwell a, a bunch of other stuff right really good trigger out of the box you want modularity, you want proven reliability, you want a common platform with common mags, M17. If you just want to stick with Glock because you love Glocks, then I'm going to put Glock on the list. The Glock 17, the original, the OG. Now, I like the original Gen 1, Gen 2s. I like less the Gen 3s and Gen 4s. I think they got a little crazy there with the finger grooves. You know, when might a judge in the 90s, I had, you know, a rat tail and a fanny pack. So I can't really judge. Can't really judge on aesthetics. But anyway, the finger grooves were a horrible idea, as were rat tails. But let's move past that. They are reliable. They are kind of the standard, right? So I think we have to put a Glock 17 on the list. The Gen 5, unless you're going all the way back to the Gen 1s, I think is the best. And I, if you really are going to dedicate yourself to an optic, I advise you to direct cut and direct mount have your slide milled for whatever optic you want. I especially advise that on a Glock because I really don't like their mounting system. I think it was kind of an afterthought. They kind of thought, how can we mount an optic on here with doing as little as possible and not messing with the engineering of the slide, which I get. They're, that's one of the reasons Glocks are generally so reliable because they stick with what they know. But I don't think it's the most robust mounting system. I'd say get it direct cut if that's what you want to do. But a Glock 17 deserves to be on the list. And again, you know, if you want to deduct a little bit and go to the Glock 19, both in barrel and capacity and all that, go to the Glock 19 route. But it deserves to be on the list, but I think it deserves last on the list. A lot of Glock lovers out there will maybe disagree. That's fine. You want to contact me, goodshepherdtraining.com. Realize you're talking to somebody that has run Glocks lot right i ran them as a police officer i ran them as a private contractor taught at one of the largest shooting schools in the country and i think the world a lot of experience with glocks that's where i think they deserve to be fifth place but they still deserve the top five with that also with that when i put this in the patreon chat and asked them what they thought one gun came up over and over and i didn't put it in here because it's not a full-size fighting handgun, in my opinion. The market is being very small. But I'm going to mention it because they mentioned it so much. So a Patreon pick, the SIG 365. If I ever do a compact, subcompact version of this, if you guys want that, let me know, goodshippertraining.com, or leave a comment. But I think the 365 is kind of revolutionary in that world. With that... I am going to start wrapping up the show. If you want to support the podcast, appreciate good gun content that's not full of blasphemy and disgusting, filthy language and all that stuff. Also, that's not biased. Like somebody's not sending me a handgun and paying me to tell you how good it is, right? You want an honest, unbiased opinion. If you want that, you want to support the podcast, there should be a Patreon link in the show notes. Also, if you want something tangible, there is a gear store, goodshepherdtraining.com, goodshepherdtraining.com. As a thanks for staying tuned till the end, a tactical tip of the day. If you're going to run iron sights, and I love iron sights, even on my optics guns, I prefer backup iron sights. If you're talking backups, like I'm looking through the optic to see the iron sights, I like just black. For everything else, including my competition guns, duty guns, I like a bright front sight, whether that's just a white dot or fiber optic or tritium fiber optic. I like a bright front sight and a completely black rear sight. I advise you to configure your guns that way. 
You're just standing static at an indoor range, shooting one round a second at seven yards, it really makes no difference. But if you're going to push yourself and go fast, I really advise a bright front sight and a black rear sight. A couple of things you can do if you have standard three dot sights like they come on an MMP, just take a Sharpie and black out the rear sight. So you got a black rear sight. Ta da! If you're running factory Glock sights, you're probably going to change them, but if you don't, Leave the front sight how it is. The rear sight comes out pretty easy. You can just push it out pretty simply usually or tap it out and flip it around. The front of that sight is black. Instead of that giant white U-notch, flip it around so you got a white dot in the front and a black rear. Anyway, that's your tactical tip of the day. Your tactical verse of the day. Verse of the day from 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care whether you like that or that's popular in popular culture. You take that up with the Almighty. That's the word of God. If you think that's not true, I'd say you're deceived. That passage we just read started with, do not be deceived. With that, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.